Chapter 7.1, zero and negative exponents. So today we're going to be starting our chapter on exponents and exponential functions. And we're going to begin by talking about what happens when you have an exponent of zero or when your exponent is negative. So we have two properties here today. We have zero as an exponent, which says that for every non-zero number, a, a to the zero power equals one. So in my examples here, four to the zero power equals one. Negative three to the zero power equals one. 5.14 to the zero power equals one. Any number to the zero power equals one. Now with negative exponents, they work a little bit differently. For every non-zero number a and integer n, a to the negative n power equals one over a to the n, meaning you're going to take the reciprocal. So seven to the negative third power is equal to one over seven to the positive third power. Negative five to the negative second power is equal to one over negative five to the second power. So you take the reciprocal and make the exponent positive. When you are simplifying expressions, you always want to have all positive exponents. All positive So you want to make sure that those exponents are always positive at the end of your problem. So today, let's take a look at example one. What is nine to the negative second power simpli in simplified form? So nine to the negative second power, I'm going to take the reciprocal, one over nine squared. Now my negative two exponent becomes a positive two. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And then I'm going to go ahead and solve. I know what 9 squared is. 9 squared is 81. So in full simplified form, 9 to the negative second power is equal to 1 81st. Example B, negative 3.6 to the 0 power. Notice that there are parentheses around the negative 3.6. That is so that when you, if you had an exponent of let's say two, that would be negative 3.6 times negative 3.6. Without the exponent, or without the parentheses, negative 3.6 squared is the same as negative one times 3.6 squared, which means the square would be negative. So these parentheses around the negative sign are important. However, any number to the zero power equals one. Doesn't matter what the number is, if the exponent is zero, it equals one. Okay, example two. What is the simplified form of each expression? So here I have five times a cubed times b to the negative second power. Again, when you simplify, all of your exponents have to be positive. So this b to the negative second power is going to become its reciprocal. So now I'm going to have five times a cubed times one over b squared. Well, five times a cubed times one equals 5a cubed all over a denominator of b squared. Okay? <coughs> um, 1 over x to the negative fifth. Now here I have a negative exponent in the denominator. I'm going to take the reciprocal of that as well. So instead of being in the denominator, it's going to move into the numerator and become a positive exponent. So 1 over x to the negative fifth power is equal to x to the fifth power. Okay, example 3. What is the value of 3s cubed t to the negative second for s equals 2 and t equals negative 3? 
So there are two different methods. Okay, the first is to simplify first. So if I have 3s cubed t to the negative second, I'm going to simplify by taking the reciprocal of t to the negative second and get 3s cubed over t squared. Then I can substitute 2 for s and negative 3 for t. So 3 times 2 cubed over negative 3 squared. <clears throat> I have to do my exponents first. 2 cubed is 8, so 3 times 8 over negative 3 squared. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. So I get 24 over 9, which simplifies to 2 and 2 thirds. So in this method, I simplified here first. In method two, I can substitute first. So method two is going to give me three times uh, two cubed times negative three to the negative second power. So three times eight times uh, one over negative three squared is nine. Okay, so I took this, actually let me change that really fast. One over negative three, three squared. So 24 times one over nine equals 24 ninths, which again equals two and two thirds. So whichever method you prefer is up to you. You can either simplify your expression first and make sure all of your exponents are positive, or you can substitute in the values for s and t first and then uh, simplify and solve. Either way, you come up with the same answer. <clears throat> all right, example four. A population of marine bacteria doubles every hour under controlled lab conditions. The number of bacteria is modeled by the expression 1,000 times 2 to the h, where h is the number of hours after a scientist measures the population size. Evaluate the expressions for h equals 0 and h equals negative 3. What does each value of the expression represent? So we have the equation 1,000 times 2 to the h power. So in our first, h equals 0, which gives us 1,000 times 2 to the 0 power. Well, 2 to the 0 power equals 1. So I have 1,000 times 1, which equals 1,000. So I have 1,000 bacteria. So what does this represent? When h equals 0, h is the number of hours. So at the beginning, or after no time has passed, There are 1,000 bacteria. <clears throat> okay, so when h equals zero hours, no time has started. It's the beginning of the ex uh, measurement time period. There are 1,000 bacteria. However, if we take 1,000 times 2 to the h power, when h equals negative 3, so I have told you before that time cannot go backwards. And that's true, time cannot go backwards. However, this negative three for h 
means times 2 to the negative third power. This negative 3 means that we are measuring 3 hours before uh, the experiment began. There were some number of bacteria, which we don't know yet. So this negative 3 means that we are measuring before time began, OK? So this is going to equal 1,000 times 1 over 2 cubed, or 1,000 times 1 eighth, which equals 120. Five. So three hours before the experiment began, there were 125 bacteria. All right, that's it for examples for this lesson. Complete the got it and uh, email me if you have any questions.